In this video, I'm going to show you how to create objects like this chap. Before you start, get some reference images. You can do that over Google, Pinterest, whatever. It can be real images or concept art, doesn't matter, just as long as you have an image in your head that you want to go for. As a reference, I took the chapel called Maria Rast. I like the colors and the different shapes that are used in this chapel. Before I start modeling, I do a quick sketch of the ground floor. For this chapel, that was really easy and it helps me just to get a feeling of what objects I want to use and how to get the shape right and the relations between them. Okay, in Blender, we're going to use the default cube for once and we're going to scale that up. So you can type S and then 2.5. So it's scaling for 2.5 units and that gives us a cube size of 5 meter on each side. Um, with this on, we can actually change into edit mode. With the whole cube selected, we can now move it up on the set axis for 2.5 units. So it's standing perfectly on the ground. Next, I'm going to hide the light and the camera so I have a clear view and also hide the properties view on the right. Now in face select mode, select the top face and then move it down a bit. Um, I'm moving it down for two units because I think a uh, room height of 2.5 is perfectly fine. Now to get the hexagon shape, I'm going to select all the edges of the cube on the side and then do a bevel with control B. Um, I'm trying to aim for that the beveled edges are smaller than the other ones. So, um, but just, just a little bit just to get the relations correct. Okay, now in object mode, I just created another cube, which has the size of two, just to see if that one side is still wide enough. And now I can select it and extrude it. Um, so this way I get actually the main shape of our chapel. I can of course maybe make it longer, a little bit less, uh, just to see if, um, how it looks and what you're going for. Now with control R, we can add another loop cut. So um, it normally places in the middle, but as soon as you click, you can move it downwards. And as a size reference, I'm gonna add another cube just to see if the relation is about fine. So in the top, I have still enough space and the bottom looks good. Again, create a loop cut, but this time use the mouse wheel to create two at the bottom and then click to leave them as they are. Before we can continue, we need two more edges at the top. Press K for the knife tool and connect two of the vertices. At the end, press enter to accept it. And then we have a new edge. Do the same for the other side. And now we can create a new loop cut that's going all around the building. Now press Ctrl R again to create another loop cut. When you're adding a loop cut and then pressing Ctrl E, you can um, align that loop cut to one side. So Ctrl E and then F, you can toggle the side to which it's aligning. So here I'm trying to get really parallel lines towards the middle one and not um, with that rounded corner. And I may be scaling it a bit apart so um, I get them not directly in the middle. Okay, next we can select all of the bottom loops um, in face selection mode and then do an inset where we leave the thickness at zero and just change the depth. Um, and then next we can select the four faces at the front and then extrude them. So with those ones, we're now gonna create the stairs. Um, here I'm going um, really just by looks. I'm not taking really precise values and just grabbing now and pulling them out a bit more until it looks um, nice and like it could be stairs. Now we have the bottom part of our chapel finished and the room height is exactly two meters as we can see from the default cube. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just gonna pull it up a little bit more because I think it's nicer if it's a little bit higher. So with a C, I can select all the faces by just drawing over them and then put them up. Next, I wanna create the doors and windows or the door actually. So I'm gonna add one loop cut at the top and then um, divide the loop cut at the middle of it. To get the top shape of the door, I'm gonna select that loop cut except for the middle ones and then pull them down. Now in face selection mode, I can just select the faces and then um, either do an inset or extrude both way works now. I'm gonna do the inset in this video and then just pulling it back so we have a kind of door frame. After we won't do any changes at the bottom anymore, we can reduce the faces here. So select one of the edge loops in the middle and then deselect the front ones 
and open up the properties view within and here on the tool there's options and there you can enable auto merging. So if we now press G twice and move the selected loop up towards the other one, um, the vertices will merge with the other ones and um, we don't have any double ones. We can do the same for the bottom part and then we have a nice clean mesh at the bottom. For the windows we need a few more loop cuts, so press Ctrl R and then use the mouse wheel to create two of them at the front. Now with Alt select the top loop part and then deselect the first two and with G and then set move it a little bit up. With Ctrl R again create another loop cut and pull it close to the bottom. Um, here I'm going to use again the edge slide, so Ctrl E and then F to align it to the bottom line and then move it where you want to have the window. Now we need two more loop cuts in the back and I'm also going to scale them on the x-axis a bit so they're further apart. Next I'm going to add for each window a loop cut in the middle and then switch to vertex mode. And now with holding shift we can always select the two outer vertices. And for the back window, I even gonna select two of them and then pull them down with G and then set. For the back window, because it has more vertices, I'm gonna put the ones in the middle a bit more up and the ones on the bottom a bit more down. So that's gonna be a bigger window. Now turn on face selection mode and select always the faces of the window and use I to inset them. Here I'm gonna change the thickness and depth for the depth, I also had to change the value a few times until I found one that I thought was good. And then I also used um, G and then set to move the selected faces a bit more up, giving the windows a few different angles. That was it for this video. So in the next one, we're going to do the roof and the little tower on top of the roof.